Today, we're actually going to have a, a wonderful tour um, coming all the way from New Zealand. So let's fly from our home base in Toronto to Hamilton, New Zealand. And with that, I'm going to pass you over to our other co-host, which is Paul Akers. Paul, uh, take it away and just say a few words for everybody. Okay, well, everyone, uh, I'm really excited to be back in the saddle here doing this. So Bernard is a very special person, and his company is extraordinary. And I'm going to just open up with this one quick story. I have given the uh, moniker of 1B, one in a billion, to Alex Ramirez. A lot of you know Alex Ramirez has done an extraordinary job with transformations around the world now with tens of thousands of people. And the only other person I've ever given the 1B moniker to was Bernard in New Zealand. I've never seen anybody so on fire for lean and the implementation of Two Second Lean and the way he's done it in his organization and the thoroughness, the passion, and just the absolute extraordinary way that he has led and helped other people in New Zealand as well and helped people around the world. So having said that, I think you're in for a treat because we're going to go to another one of Bernard's facilities and we're going to see how Two Second Lean has been implemented. So Bernard, it's all yours. Hello and welcome to Premier Group NZ. This is one of our manufacturing sites in Tauranga, New Zealand. Got me, uh, me main man Tane here. He's the operations uh, team leader for this site. Here comes Willie and the youth. We'll just be chasing our stray dog. Anyway, so come with us. We're going to have a look around this yard and share some of the improvements that we've made. Um, one thing I always like to say at the start of these tours is that I actually don't like lean. It's a bombshell. I love lean. Okay, <laughs> I love lean. I think you do too, now, Tane. Sure do. Let's roll. Let's go. Check out our vest, by the way. We are at war with weight. So everywhere we go today, we're going to show you um, examples of little improvements that our team are making all the time. So yeah, let's keep rolling. Okay, so here we are walking into the factory. Just uh, heading over to say hello to Lucky. And here we are at one of the palletizing stations. And um, just checking in with Lucky to see how his day is going. And just explaining that our number one goal here is growing people. And then of course that flows on to all these improvements that we see around us. All around us is evidence of improvements and they are done by the people. They're not done by leadership team or managers it's done by everybody everybody is involved in improvements at premier group and this is the beauty of building a two second lean culture where everyone understands what improvement looks like and that improvements can be tiny and the improvements are absolutely endless heading over to one of our palletizing stations now and just um, saying hello to the guys over here um, Logan and Brian and just um, checking in on them seeing how their day's going telling them what we're up to and um, checking in on quality so everywhere we go uh, the two founding principles that we believe underlie lean as taught um, in Japan and by uh, that Paul is often always sharing with us number one deep respect for people and number two a deep respect for resources having a chat with one of the lads about quality right now and he's noticed a little defect so everything um, in this factory is hand stacked which is a, a way that we add serious value for our customers sets us apart from all our brick competitors in the marketplace no one else is hand stacking there's some more visual standards on the wall here there's visual standards everywhere we go and again these are done by the people they're always updating them always improving them always adding more if there's a visual standard missing they're always looking out for those gaps another visual standard there or walkaway standard whatever you like to call it we like to call them walkaway standards actually makes uh, a lot of sense and then uh, heading over having a quick look there at a simple shadow board which is the tools that are needed on each machine for mold changeovers so we've got three uh, brick machines running in this factory saying hello to another one of the lads they are all important all key everyone is key our people are our most important asset just chatting about how the day's going and then pointing out that he's taking the load of product into one of the curing chambers ready for overnight curing and the boys do an incredible job of keeping these factories clean 
marked out specially to show so that everyone knows that he's listening to an audio book. One of the books that we recommend, one of our core values is Pursue Growth and Learning. Looking up to um, the guys on the batching platform, one of the guys up there is training. You can see he's got a green vest on, so he's learning how to mix. So we're always cross-training. People are always learning how to do new things each and every day. Catching up with another one of the guys on the machine. It's on machine one. And the guys do an amazing job of keeping everything clean and tidy in here. Lots of um, standardization, always room for improvements. And I'm sure all of you watching will see lots of room for improvement. And that's what um, operating a lean company is all about, being open to everybody's scrutiny. So now we're gonna take a look. Here we go, more walkaway standards. I'm trying to shout into the camera there, to no avail. Saying hello to Corne, another one of the key members. And I want to point out that everyone is a key crew member. There's quite a bit of dust up here. But again, the team does an amazing job of trying to keep on top of all that. So you can see Kanban triggers for all the oxide bags, even in this most incredibly dusty environment. The team are always looking for ways to reduce the dust get to the root cause of the problem. And again, everywhere we go, you see evidence of improvement and it's cheap and cheerful, lots of cheap and cheerful improvements. So we're taking a look now up onto the batching platform. And every time I visit this factory or every time I visit any of our factories, even if it's only a week apart, things are always changing. There's always evidence of improvements and positive change. And we're dealing with dust and cement and aggregates and sand. And so up here, we can see a little bit of the batching process. Again, more walkaway standards. And some training going on. Everywhere we go, there's always training going on, always trying to move people around on the skills matrix, which we'll have a look at the skills matrix soon. Everything's labelled, the hoppers, the augers, the mixer, the conveyors. Always trying to improve access to everything as well. So that um, everybody's got visual, uh, so, so that we're always trying to improve visual management and visual control. And access, making access easy. So we're always improving the layout of the factories and our yards to reduce transportation and reduce motion and reduce um, over-processing and the risk of rework and defects and reduce, obviously, overproduction where it all starts from. So just having a chat up on the batching platform here. The workshop areas, um, a little bit less noise here, so I can take these off. Um, you might not have been able to hear me too well at the factory, but I'll try and explain more uh, later. But yeah, so, we're always, always, always improving, always decluttering, always trying to get rid of things, always putting things in the red tag area. If we're not using it, we red tag it, put it, put it, um, you know, put it aside, and check on that area. You know, we review that sort of almost. I think it's almost once a year in this factory. But um, most workshops you go into are a cluttered mess. There's stuff everywhere. Um, we, we have workshops in, in each factory. This is just a very, yeah, very simple one. But um. You know, before we started lean, I remember coming in here, it was just a mess, there's just crap on, crap on all the benches, just stuff, wild stuff everywhere. But um, if you just make tiny improvements every day, it's incredible the power of that, how things just get better and better and better. And better. It's a real credit to um, Tane and all the guys here, doing an amazing job. But even the scrap metal's got its own little box, putting um, the bands on everything, labels on everything. It can always be better, so don't judge us. Lean is continuous improvement. The movie group is always positively dissatisfied. We're positive that we're making progress, but we're always dissatisfied with the standard. We can always be, you know, we're always striving for excellence, always striving for perfection. So we take a look at the bathroom, though. Take a look at here. Lean begins in the bathroom, by the way. And, you know, we're working in a really dirty environment, dust and cement and 
water and all these things. Super challenging to keep the bathroom tidy. Um, and again, I do lots of business coaching and I go around so many businesses and one of the first places I go is the bathroom um, and mostly they are absolutely disgusting. So let's have a look around. So it's really simple, there's nothing, nothing flash in here. But the point I want to make is that even though our guys are working in a filthy environment, a really challenging environment, that they keep the standard high. You know, we're always keeping the rope tight. We are, one of our favourite sayings here is, leave it better than you found it. Um, it's really, really important. Well, there you go. Look up there, Tane's pointing to the sign. <laughs> there you go. Leave it better than you found it. Um, and again, visual standards everywhere. Um, it's not a flash bathroom by any means, but it's pretty robust, um, but it's always being improved by the guys. They're always looking for ways to improve it and to always improve the cleaning process as well. Make sure that's um, always getting better. So let's take a look through here. So again, it's really noisy here, so you may not be able to hear me, but we'll try. Um, again, the guys are an incredible job of always improving all these spaces. Uh, this is the lead cave. We have one of these in each of our workplaces. Again, it's always changing, always getting better, always improving. Visual standards on everything. This is, this is the way we improve, the way we do improvements, right? So it makes it easy for the guys and we don't have to worry about um, them uh, inter interfering in the workshop with where there's obviously two engineers on this, on this site. Um, so this gives them their own sort of improvement tools that they need. Removing the clutter, making work flow, making work easy, um, respect for people, respect for resources. We try and recycle everything. Most of the improvements you see are made from recycled stuff, right? Don't they? So much stuff here is recycled. Putting bits everywhere as well. Important that access to cleaning and bins you know, in an environment like this make it easy to clean so that there's access to brooms and shovels and um, obviously we're always trying to reduce, get to the root cause and reduce, you know, where the dust is coming from, but as that gets better over time, we still have to have ways to combat dust and dirt and things that get that out. So Okay, so now we're checking out um, some of the products that we resell, like brick tires and sealers and other consumable products that we sell with our bricks and paving and things like that. And again, you just see evidence of lots of improvements and the guys keeping the rope tight and the guys that are always making improvements. Um, again, cheap and cheerful. Tane's explaining how they made these shelves here and these dividers here all from recycled materials using brick tires to actually create those um, those dividers there out of um, broken you know brick tie bins so just yeah recycling reusing do more with less is one of our core values which really sums up lean in uh, just a, a few words you know do more with less so try not to buy anything um, for projects like this just always looking for ways to recycle and reuse so now we've got some temporary storage for the engineers but come and check this out it can always be better, but again, most shipping containers you see like this are in absolute shambles. Our guys respect the space. They understand that it's all about removing the struggle. Everything needs a home. Everything is labelled. So they come in here and there's no struggle. And I can tell you for free that when we first started on our lean journey, areas like this, <laughs> Tane's laughing now, were in absolute shambles. Just, you know, bolts and chains and tools and tools used to go missing all the time and used to take 10 minutes to find the right tool or 20 minutes to find the right bolt or nut, but it's all so much easier and so much simpler. Again, you can, you know, we always say there's improvements are endless, there's so much more we can do, but compared to where we were five, six years ago, it's absolutely uh, transformative.
the team, so Tane's going to show us in a minute. Um, again, same story. It's really challenging keeping spaces. Like this is a, this is the uh, the lunch room for the production team at this factory. Again, when we first started on our lean journey, um, areas like this were in absolute shambles. This is what we're all about, team. Keeping the rope tight. So this is slipping down. So we need to improve the way we hold those walkway standards up. But this is what it's all about. In leadership, lean leadership, Tane's a great example of this, and so are all our leaders at Premier Group, is that it's all about leaving it better than you found it. If you see a problem, you don't just walk past it, because the standard you walk past is the standard you accept. If there's a standard, the standard should always be improving. Every time we do 3S, which is every, every morning and every night, we're always finding improvement opportunities. That's why 3S is so important. We really believe in that. Sweep, sort, and standardize. Um, we used to teach 5S years ago, but 3S has made it so much simpler for people to understand and embrace and just actually get on and do it. Um, but you can have all the lean tools in the world and all the theory and all the knowledge, but if you're not actually applying those simple tools and techniques um, every single day consistently, day after day after day after day, um, all that head knowledge is just a total waste of space. And we have our morning, morning meeting board where the guys will discuss the mission, core values, um, support tickets, issues, raving fans, figure out solutions. Uh, this board is the info hub, so they can just, that's the green tick, red tick. Um, if there's any red ticks, we can discuss it. Um, and every morning meeting, so we just start in April. Um, and then all around here sort of just tells them where they are, who's the meeting leader, a uh, bit of a roster. Um, this is the agendas, work our agendas. Uh, we've got the chemi cards for the day, so they've done a Kaizen event today, they've done some 2SL, uh, they've got GPP and 3S reports to do. Brilliant, I'll just today's. explain those, those are brilliant. This is, so this is for the overall team chemi cards, we have individual ones as well in a lot of areas of the business, but in some areas like this team we use a team chemi card, so these are the, the sort of the key things that need to be done in the day. GPP is our Growing People program, which is our online academy where everyone logs in and does some study every single day about different areas of the business. Um, and then there's the three S and reports. So so you can see today they've done those two so far and those are still red, but they'll be green by the end of the day. And your team leader's in charge of making sure that gets done right, Tane, yep. and that they get flipped over. Yep. So visual management, um, again, always trying to improve that. Sorry, you're gonna say something else? No, that's no, all. No, oh, this is just our plan on a page, so. Plan on a page for the business strategy, yep. Um, we won't zoom in on that one. <laughs> um, Another mini game just to save cost. Um, a big thing we're focusing on is cost savings um, and where we're spending money and how we're spending it. And as we can see now, an O and M is our two factories. And we've only had one truck in for each factory at them this week. And that's this mini game is about reducing, um, you're focusing on reducing the amount of waste going off the site, right? Yep. Um, in our in skip, in skip bins that go out to landfill. So I think you've cut that in half, haven't you? Yeah, we've Over cut that in half. Month. Yep. So these are little focuses that we have. We, we each each month we play a mini game in each department, and we'll just pick one one or two critical numbers that we feel we're not up to scratch on, or something we can improve on. And so this was one area where we thought, hey, it looks like we're sending out too much waste. We're spending too much on waste. We're sending too much to landfill. We're a lean company. We're obsessed about eliminating waste through continuous improvement. So here's a um, a game we could play to really get our guys focused on reducing that. And that's that's at the end of the month. Um, there'll be bronze, silver, or gold, or whatever level you get to. Um, the guys will get like a team activity or a team reward. Is that right, Tane, on this yeah. game? Yep, awesome. And then if you look around here, was there something else you wanted to talk no, about? No, that's it. Yeah. So, to, um, so I'll just show you a bit, bit more around here. Again, just simple walkaway standards, simple visual standards. No, it's not perfect, but it's we're always trying to um, raise the bar, always trying to lift the level. But it's all about the guys doing it. It's not, or oh, the team doing it. It's not about me. It's not about Tane. It's not about the leaders in the business. It's about everyone acting like an owner. Everyone understanding that they are an owner. That's why in the morning meetings we train them on the financial figures as well, not just their what, not, not just what's affecting their department, but the company overall. So we train them like an owner. We educate them like an owner. We treat them like an owner. Um, and they are expected to act like an owner. So that's a really, really important principle at Premier Group. So again, pretty simple. Our different principles around the walls as well. So, you know, we can, Tane or any of the team leaders can, can sort of grab someone and say, hey, do you understand Premier Principle number 10? Um, or do you think what you're doing today has been in accordance with our, you know, core value number two or Premier Principle number 10 or, you know, and we'll make sure people are always learning. One of the things we say here is that all our leadership team, the most important hat they wear is that they are the CRO, which is the Chief Reminding Officer. Very cheesy, 
but very helpful, very powerful. Anything um, else at here? Yeah, just some small reminders that the guys put up around for themselves as well, uh, which is good to see. Like, that's the eight deadly sins of waste. Um, so they print them out themselves and they put them in little areas um, just to keep it in their mind. Yeah, it's great. So everything you're seeing here is done by the guys, not done by me, not done by Tane. That's just something I want to get across because so many businesses I coach with Lean, um, you know, you've got the leadership team trying to do everything or the business owner trying to do everything. It's impossible. It's an uphill battle. But if the guys do it, if they own it, it's their workspace. This is their business. They own it. If you don't let them do it, and yes, they make mistakes. Like we could say, well, what's this doing on the ground? Um, and you know, Tane will challenge people like that and will say, well, why isn't this on wheels? Why isn't this desk on wheels? Why isn't that desk on wheels? These are improvement opportunities. Um, but it's about stimulating the guys, asking them the, the right questions and getting them to come up with the answers. Otherwise you just end up with a bunch of sheep. Um, <laughs> that's all you get, people that are just following you. So we say lead with questions, not answers. Someone comes to you with a question, you go back in, to them with a question and say, well, what do you think we should do? Or what do you, how do you think we could improve this situation? Okay, team, so um, let's head upstairs now and have a quick look at the office up here. <laughs> you know. Okay, cool. So um, let's have a look around in here. We'll just talk about, um, well, Tana, you might want to show some recent improvements, and then I'll just chat about some of the, some of the things that, that um, I think are important for people to know about. Um, recent improvements up here. Um, oh, Danielle's visual standard, uh, done visual standards for our health and safety cupboards, cabinets, uniforms in one, and PPE gear in another. Uh, financial reports are practicing at every meeting. This is the dispatch meeting report. Um, this set up here, we made this for the guys downstairs because they don't have a computer. Um, so they come and do all their printing right here in this little corner and laminating for their visual standards. Um, and they, that's all set up for their phones just to hook their WhatsApp to, um, print all their photos, all their visual standard photos, um, and then they just print out anything on the printer over to the elimination station, whatever they call it, and they've got all the gear there for that. That's brilliant, and I'll just jump in there, Tanya. So, so what Tanya and the team have done here is made it, instead of delegating or trying to get people to print and laminate for you, you set up the station so the team have access to it, they can do it themselves. Um, I love this trophy here, Tanya, tell, <laughs> tell us what this trophy's for. And I love the, the hairdo as well. Sorry, so this is wrapping up with the champs. Um, this is our trophy, so we're in a gold core team. Uh, I think we won three times this month, um, so we decided to decorate ours with a bit of rep here. Has it got a name? A smiley face. Um, Tane? Uh, Tane? Uh, something. Tane? Don't know yet. Anyway, that's beautiful. <laughs> Let's go check to Danielle. Danielle. Thank, say thanks to Tane, you know you don't have to, but <laughs> tell, us, tell us what you love about Lee. Well, well, always. well, I feel like it's not the best right now, but you can see that my desk actually... It's amazing. It, it's, you know, done with my rubbish bin, but everything it's else amazing. is amazing. It, everything's easy to access. This is my favourite drawer. Oh, that's a little bit. That's it just beautiful. makes my life so much easier. Three yep. screens, yep. tidy all the time. And everything you do, you're removing struggle all the time. All the time. Before you joined Premier Group, you didn't, you hadn't heard about Lean and you hadn't heard about these principles that we talk about all the time. How's it changed your personal life as well? Lean. In, in everywhere. I want to share. I won't put on the chat, but my laundry cupboard is so amazing. Yeah. Everything is so perfect. You it's have fantastic. no idea. It's so good. Fantastic. And yeah, it's. Genius. And you and like since you've joined, you've been really conscious. You were telling me the other day of like the waste that's all around you at home and how all you can time. improve all things at home. And yeah, even like school lunches, I think I've spoken to about yeah. this before, I still waste so much time in the mornings. It was yeah. always my biggest annoyance. Yeah. I honestly would spend like an hour doing them. Yeah. But then I created all these boxes, yeah. everything's easy So you've to improved the process. You've improved the process. How and long now, does it take now? Oh, honestly, like I grab a bag out yeah. and then I have to make a sandwich and yeah. that's it. Because yeah. all the bags... So what, 20 be, minutes now from an hour? Maybe 10. 10 all minutes! Three kids. I How good? I timed it. How good? Yeah, How so good? good? How good? Yeah. And these are the examples. <laughs> this is fantastic. See, stories like this is what inspired... This is the AME tour, by the way. Inspire people um, all around the world to embrace Lean. Yeah. Two second Lean. Yeah. Really simple. And now I'm such a good mother. They have these amazing bags. All their yeah. friends are like, oh. Fantastic. Oh, so good. See, yeah. that's a great story. What is your um, what is your favourite lead principle? Is it like, you know, out of these things we talk about, remove the struggle, fix what bugs you, what what resonates with you the most? Yeah, What's maybe your remove the struggle because yeah. I will do something for such a long time yeah. struggling. Yeah. 
it's just my personality. It's and there's yeah. no, yeah. But now this has made you stop and fix what broke you. 100%. Instead of just putting up with waste yeah. all the time. Yeah. Love it. I love that story about the lunch boxes. I've never heard this one, by the way, and this is why we do these tours, because then I learn more stuff. Maybe I should post that's it. Right. We'll you should post that process. Yeah. Well, you should show the process. Can explain this one? <coughs> oh, yeah. Explain yeah. this one. Thank you. Oh, so the guys used to come up all the time, yeah. and they'd go, do you know where the label maker is? And I was like, I can't look like this anymore. Yeah. And so I was like... Label maybe it's like, in I here. Maybe it should be in red. That probably would be a bit better in yeah. the process. Yeah. Yeah. It is just fantastic. So, so you fix what bugs you. And it doesn't waste their time the same. So and look at her beautiful cover. Yeah. Did you make all these improvements? Yes, I did post it. Yo, I was. I was like, it. No, it was like but see, guys, ago. we get like forty a day on the chat. So, but yeah, I reckon I remember. And I'm sure this we can update this one as well. Probably. Yeah, of course. Sometime. There's always room for improvement. Yeah, I think but it's a main here as well. Tane, do I talk about this? Oh, these are, you, want me to talk about this, you can talk about them, but these are mine and Danielle's chemi cards, our yeah. daily ones, yeah. um, weekly, and then our monthlies. Um, so yeah, at the moment Danielle's lagging. Um, <laughs> She's and I do apologise, I had issues today with my... Um, so gold coin not done, GPP not done yet. No excuses, no, just kidding. <laughs> Tane's a high achiever, so is Danielle actually, she's trying to hide in the corner <laughs> now. Turn around, Tane. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thanks Danielle, that was great. You're okay, you're welcome to go, uh, you. get out of your way now. Thanks so much. Now, over here, Tane, I want to show you this, if you want to step back a bit. Um, this training matrix is, we have these in all departments as well, so you can see where the gaps are. So, um, we won't spend too much time on it, but it's really important if you haven't got a training matrix in your business in each department, you need to get it, because it shows you where the skill sets are, where you've got gaps, where you've got, you know, with people go away, where you've got weaknesses in your team. So really, really important. Um, and you can see if people are number one, a novice, number two, developing, number three, confident, or number four, a coach. So they're able to coach others. And some of these skills might take two years to get up to a coach. Some might take six months because some of these skills are simple. Some of them are more tricky. Have a walk around some of the yards. Do you want to tell us about these little um, signs? Oh, so these signs here, team, for dispatch, yeah. Um, our yard moves that much and our products shop and change on top sellers, low sellers. Um, and we used to have everything painted on the ground with their names on the ground or the products. And now they've got these, co these cones with these signs. So in between this cone and there should be one down there somewhere. It'll point in the direction of where the country is. And what product? Yeah, and what product? Yeah, this one's country countrywide. So all the country white will run from this cone and this label right down to the other cone and label. Um, over on this side, if you can see that cone there, but around in the wind, a bit of an improvement we probably need to fix. Um, that'll say Medina this way, so that's all our Medina, it's not top sellers, so all the colours we have in Medina. Um, we'll tell you that the Medina just live in that area, um, and as we walk around the yard, we'll see plenty more signs in both yards, where they've got a sign of what products and where. Um, for something like Country White, it'll be specifically Country White, because that's our top selling brick. Cool, and that's gone from trying to paint things on the ground, which is inflexible, you need to paint over it because stock is always, things are always fluctuating. Like Tane says, a top seller last month might not be a top seller six months from now, and so things are always changing. So this allows us to be flexible. Lean is all about being flexible, trying not to have anything too much fixed on the ground or to the walls. It's all about flexibility. That's why we love putting things on wheels, we love being able to move things around. And as your business grows and changes, because as we know, change is the only constant thing in business, or in life really, that things should be flexible. And the more flexible they are, the faster you can improve, and of course that flows through to the customer, right? It's all about improving the life of the customer, removing struggle for your team, making their life easy, and making the life of the customer easy. So the guys do an incredible job of keeping the yard clean and tidy, and we're dealing with aggregates and sand, and it's, you know, <coughs> bits of timber coming off pallets all the time and pallet wrap and all that. And if you look around, the standard is amazing. We're always trying to improve it to make it easier to clean, faster to clean. And like I say, um, the standard you walk past is the standard you accept. So when any of us is going around in our leadership team, we see something on the ground, we pick it up, and we get it into the nearest bin. Really important. If we walk past it, we accept that standard. Same over here. Any bits of timber, that's a defect. It could, the, it could create a bump for the forklift, which could result in some damaged product. So we're always, you know, improving our cleaning processes. But the important thing is too, making sure your leadership team 
understands this principle that they're picking it up, not just walking past it. Any rubbish, anything that's not up to standard. If you look that way, you can see our um, through to the back of our paving factory yard. So everything we've been looking at so far is the brick factory and the brick yard. And then everything through that way is the, the second factory we have in Tauranga, which is the paving factory <coughs> on its own site and with all the paving stock as well for our great customers. But we'll take a look in there soon. So we'll take a look in here. I'll show you a really cool improvement the guys made recently. So you can see it up here and this is a rumbling machine. And then this is a conveyor belt. And we also have a crushing machine as well. And we were about to spend 30 or 40 grand on a new conveyor. And the boys came up with this great idea that we put this conveyor on wheels. On wheels, um, and of course, now we can use this asset to uh, feed the rumbler and feed the crusher. It's not in its um, current location, but just to give you an idea of how this works, this is a really cool improvement that saved thirty or forty thousand dollars. Again, an improvement here. Simple stuff. Four point holder, crown holder, screws and shove old TV. Everything has a home, no matter what bit of equipment we're looking at, everything has a home. And if it doesn't have a home, if it doesn't have a home, we improve it. So um, everything is always, always improving. Always improving. And have a look around there, I'll show you some reasons. So because of the growth of the business, um, we had to split our paving and our brick factories up and this property came up next door. The sale was perfect timing so we're gradually improving that building with new cladding, new painting. Um, so some recent improvements over the last few months have been these big aggregate bins and the aggregate shelter. Um, then these aggregate hoppers here which feed the batching plant inside the building. So everything you see around us has been built in the last sort of 12 to 18 months I guess. All these ramps, all these safety bars, um, everything you see here. So we're taking an old building and you know it's trying to gradually give it a birthday, really improve it all the time. Um, if we look in here, we don't have the paving plant operating today, but Tane's going to explain to us lots of the different improvements. But again, as we look around, we've taken a really old building that was um, actually the, the original owner was going to demolish it. And we said, no, we can use this. Um, so let's look over here. Just again, real simple stuff. Um, we don't need to spend too much time on it. But again, just making sure everything's got a home over here. Make sure everything's got a home. All the different molds that we use on our machines. Walkaway standard, all the molds are labeled. Easy access with the forklift. Um, again, we're dealing with dirty things all the time. Oil and dirt and dust um, and, you know, cement products we look out here in the what we call the um, stack out area um, again guys stack out area it's clean it's tidy um, they've got all the labeling they need they've got all the things that they need um, at their fingertips let's take a walk um, through the factory standard board up here again cheap and cheerful just using core flute packaging and then the guys do their own photos and own laminating at their laminating station you know makes it so easy and so simple flagstone boards that's what it looks like you know so Again, we're always trying to mistake-proof things or pokey okay, idiot-proof everything, making sure everything, um, make the process the expert, not the person. That's a really important tip to remember. Machines in a minute, because Tane's going to explain some of the improvements on our couple of um, paving machines here. Let's keep walking through here. Some more recent improvements, these big container shelters for holding more of our um, sandstone tiles and things like that. Um, we're always growing, always adding new products. Always experimenting with new products as well. Some of our beautiful grouts are over here, um, resin based grouts. Lots of the stuff you see too, and that's the beauty of a, a lean culture is everyone's always thinking outside the square, always thinking in an innovative way. So we're always coming up with new products and new ideas and new ways of making the life of the customer easier. That grout's a perfect example. It's 10 times faster or 12 times faster to grout a patio using that grout than it is to do the old traditional method on hands and knees. Um, same with like some of the products we can see in here. 
There's, I can see our big 900 by 900 sandstone in there. Um, totally unique, no one else in New Zealand doing a um, product that size. And so it's the same right across our range. All our brick sizes are different. Um, and you know, a lot of it comes from feedback from our awesome clients, architects, builders, landscapers, bricklayers, always trying to improve the life of the customer. Um, we'll take a quick look in here. Hey, Willie. There you go. Good. 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 Certainly. Have you made the lawns recently? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Willie doesn't just have lawns on the ground, he, he has them up on, his, up on his counter as well. By the way, this is the lush lawn, 40 mil lush lawn, we sell this stuff. Willie, what do you love about lean? Uh, lean, oh, so there's probably one one big word I could put into lean, which would be um, efficiency. Efficiency? So just making everything smooth, Yeah. all the processes smooth going yeah. and just wasting the... Uh, Minimising waste on yeah. a lot of time and effort. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. That's what you love the most? Yeah, for sure. Efficiency, sure. removing struggle. That's right. And you guys, I mean, you and your team do an amazing job. Like, every, every time I come in here, things are always improving. We had a great chat to Daddy Old next door as well. Yeah. Just, just talking about how she uses lean in her personal life and how it's changed her there as well. Have you got any examples of lean at home? Lean at home, um, what it's done for you? Probably. Probably a lot of the garage side, yeah. more like sweep salt standardizing, yeah. just yeah. having everything in their own home, yeah. own place, so yeah. it's easy to find, yeah. easy to... Yeah. Removing struggle. Yeah, for sure. Lean is that simple, stop and fix what bug you. Um, have a look around, is there anything else you want to say while we're on the, on the tour? No, 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 no. let's carry on. We can, we can help ourselves? Yeah. Okay, sure. sweet. So again, everything you see here, it's always changing, always getting better. There's Willie and the team's um, uh, weekly, monthly um, cami cards, that's their cami board. We're looking at standardising this right across the company actually, so that everyone's got a standard cami board, same size, and using daily, um, daily, weekly, and monthly. Um, again, you can see their sort of scoreboards, some of the some of the posters. We train the team on the three MUs all the time: Muda, Mura, and Murai, um, and just how they all work together. That's really important. Actually, pretty simple um, sort of little poster, but it's really important to, to train the team on that. Over here is just like um, Willie and his team. Um, take a lot of pride in samples, manufacturing samples and putting together these sample boards for our customers. So this is stock of different samples ready to go out to customers. They send a lot of brochure packs out of here as well. The premium X mortar boards, so a lot of sample type stuff out of here. And all, and all of our natural stone samples and porcelain and things like that. Um, so again, just everything for the home. So just removing the struggle all the time. I think in here if we have a look, um, if I remember from my last visit, yeah, there's always, this has improved again since my last visit. This is again where they put together lots of sample boxes for architects, landscapers, builders of you know brick samples, mortar samples, stone samples, granite samples. Anything you want to talk about here, Tony? No, these are pretty cool here. They just put the bubble wrap on rolls um, so they can pull it out onto the desk. They're wrapping the samples? Yep. And they just pull it out across the desk, but yeah. Start wrapping the sample back towards the edge and then. So you just cut it off at the edge of the table and there's no wasted bubble wrap. That's brilliant. And all so, the tools are there, all the stickers are there, label maker, the, ta the tape. Um, again, you can see lots of improvement opportunity here, but hey, it's always getting better and it's always changing. Absolutely love it. Rubbish bin off the ground. <laughs> there we go. There's an improvement opportunity right there. Need a hook. It needs a better hook. Anyway, here we go. So everywhere we go, we see improvement opportunities, but you've got to have bigger eyes and big ears looking for those opportunities. And often cupboards are disgusting. If you go into most buildings, um, they hide a lot of waste. That could definitely be improved. But see, uh, <laughs> Tano's laughing in the background there. But mostly they're full of clutter and rubbish. But our guys are keeping on top of it and using them to full advantage. In fact, I'll be saying, why don't we rip these doors off? Because as soon as you put a door on something, you can hide waste. So we're all, we're all about ripping doors off stuff. <laughs> but again, we're working with existing, you know, existing old buildings here, so always trying to remove walls, remove drawers, remove cupboards, make things visual and transparent, easy to see. Thanks, Willie. Sweet. Also, Chris, guys, he's famous, world famous in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> he's always got some bad jokes. <laughs> but anyway, we won't ask you any of those today. We've got to show some improvement for the wall blocks, really. Uh, so we've just got um, our dad all the stuff. Right. Yeah, I've got a lot of 
Yeah, it's dangerous. <laughs> what are you doing there? So, this is to get the change the stickers. Oh, really? I've got to change them. So, save me cutting the rake and waste. See, see, he's not going to be the struggle. But I bet you that'll cost anything to make, right? Yeah, nothing at all. Recycle. So, probably the. Yeah, that's that. It looks dangerous, but. um. So, keep away from Chris when he's holding this thing. What do you call it? Excalibur. Excalibur, okay, okay. That means it used to be a caliber. It's an Excalibur. And, um. A few tools and things in here. Yeah, Label box. holder. I mean, it can always be improved, but Chris, yeah. well done. <laughs> Anything else you want to say about lean? Uh, I mean, Has lean changed your life? Yes. How much? Two much. Two, so much? <laughs> yeah, too much. <laughs> okay, there you go. See, what's your favourite lean principle? Uh, do, you have, do you have a favourite say or a favourite sort I of advice? I would say it would be um, to do more or less. Do more or less. Yeah. Or same time, same energy, same struggle. Thanks, man. Talk soon. Here we go. Open, close. Mistake proof. See, everything is mistake proof. Open and close. Everything's labelled. Everything's got a home. Make it easy to clean the bins as well. I'm going to jump up here and show you. You can probably um, stay there if you want, Tanya, or come up a bit. See, so we've got lime bin, chip bin, sand bin one, sand bin two. So when the suppliers come in with, from the quarries with the aggregates, they know exactly where to tip the right product and there's a process they follow um, to make sure they get the right product into the right bin. So again, mistake proofing everything as much as possible. Um, and then we can't really see on the camera, but if you look down, down into these bins, you'll see there's lime in that one. Um, and that's probably got enough product in there for another day of operation. But there, down below us is this massive 9 metre retaining wall, which we can't see. It's uh, in our Tauranga site, and we're just going to take a walk in now and have a look around. Let's go. Okay, team, so we're just going to shoot into one of the offices in Tauranga. Um, jump in, and again, we'll have a quick chat to Stacey. But again, you can see the cami board, which is really visual, really powerful. Um, Stacey, you might want to talk to us about a couple of your favourite improvements in here, or things that you use all the time. Cool, yeah, my cami card system is the best because you can see at any point how I'm tracking for the week, for the month, for the day. Um, it is, like, everything improves constantly and that's probably what I love about Lean as well is yeah. that it never ends, right? There's wasters everywhere. Um, so it is endless and this can still keep being improved. But for the summary, for me, I'm a real numbers person, so it works well for me. It's visual, it's up there, and I can see how I've tracked each month, and I can watch my progress that way too. That's awesome. Thanks, Stacey. And what do you um, what do you love about Lean the most? Like Lean at home, Lean at work. Like what's Lean done for you in your um, in your life? I think just in general, it makes everything so much easier. Like being in your kitchen and knowing yep. that you don't have to walk to 10 different places yep. to get your coffee. Yep. I want to know that I'm going to have everything there to make my coffee and have yep. it in two seconds. Everything has a home. Yep. There's no yep. waste in the yep. process. Yep. I'm not walking around from places yep. to places. Yep. Then I can have more time to train to get my steps to up that way. Stuff. To do the value stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's brilliant. And that's one thing we always talk about at home is that like, and even with the kids, it's like, what is, what is the result of lean? It means that we're removing struggle, we're removing waste, so there's more time for fun, like more time for value add. For the kids, it's like more time with dad playing soccer or playing tennis or whatever. And like you say, for you, more tra time for training, more time for things that you enjoy doing. I can sleep more if it's quick. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> because Stacey and the team, everyone here that takes lean home, which is most of the team, they improve their life because they're just removing struggle, they're stopping and fixing what bugs them, and they stop doing mindless, mind-numbing, stupid things in their processes every day like getting out, of, the way they get out of bed. Everything in life is a process, right? The way you get out of bed, the way you brush your teeth, the way you have your shower, all those things are a process. So it's about stripping the waste out of all those processes. So you've got more time for the good stuff, right? Fantastic. Is there anything else you want to show us in here that's been a, like, a, like a, a tool or a, um, anything you're using that's really helpful, like skills matrices or scoreboards or? Um, we obviously do know. have all of that. So we do a Go to Cool Championship, which I have my scoreboard. I've just reset it, um, but that's a scoreboard that we use to track. We've obviously got a training matrix, so you can see um, all the different areas that I'm training in. This goes with our scoreboard, our yeah, trophies for our, our Go to Cool Championship there. Um, again, my tasks are all visual, um, rules for our gold coin game are visual. Everything has a place as well. Yes, um, right. You'll notice on my desk, like, everything's got a place and everything's got a little Kanban. So again, I know that I've always got enough 
notepads, I've got enough pens, I've got enough cards, awesome. and that's topped up. And same thing, if I run out, all of my stationery has their own little Kanban, so anything I run out of, I check it straight in the ordering, and whoever's on the stationery orders for that week is going to order that, and it's going to be topped up always. So it just keeps everything as a one-piece flow, it's everything fantastic. topped up, fantastic. everything you need is there. Fantastic. And I love what you said before, that the answer is where the question is, or so where the question is there also is the answer. And Kanban triggers for every little tiny thing, you think, oh, that's obsessive, but... It's not. The, the more you get into lean, the more you realise that the more of this stuff you do, life just gets easier because your mind is freed up for creative thinking, freed up for problem solving, freed up for serving customers, freed up for looking after your family, for looking after your health. Life just gets better and better and better. And actually one little tool I just noticed this, Stacey, this is something we use a lot, is the premium role description right around the business. Everyone writes their own role description in this little template. We're updating it almost monthly because things are always changing here. The only constant thing in any business really is change. And so that's that's something that works really well. The skills matrixes, we've talked about those. But yeah, just making life easy, removing the struggle, fantastic. Thanks, Stacey. Legend. But that kind of covers everything I want to chat about today. Thank you so much for joining on this tour. You've been amazing. Thank you for your patience and uh, listening to us and coming around with us on the tour. Hopefully you've got some great takeaways to um, you know put into your business and improve your organization. If you want to reach out, um, send me a voice note on WhatsApp. Do not email me, I don't reply to emails. Um, it's just WhatsApp only. Connect with me on LinkedIn, um, Bernard Powell on LinkedIn. You can DM me there um, or put comments in this um, video if you want to um, you know, connect as well um, or any questions that we haven't answered because I know this tour is pretty flat out and we don't. I haven't really been able to deep dive into anything. But um, yeah, feel free to put a comment um, or any questions below and you can go to www.premierbusinessacademy.co.nz. There's lots of free resources there. It's all free. It's all yours to help you grow your business, help you improve your life, improve mindset, sales, marketing, lean, all these things. Um, also, remember lean is about life. It's about, um, it's not just a business tool or a business philosophy. It's really um, a human development system, right? It's a human transformation system. It's the ultimate human development system. It's the ultimate way of helping people to get to the top of Maslow's hierarchy of human needs, you know, self, um, you know, um, self actualization of and, and fulfillment. Um, that's what lean is really all about. Number one, it's, it's, it's all about growing people and then everything else sort of flows on from there. So don't just apply it at work, apply it in your health. Make sure you listen to Lean Health by Paul Ackers. It's amazing. So go, go to the Lean Play app and listen to that. It's mind blowing. Um, listen to Lean Life, listen to Banish Sloppiness and Fall in Love with Precision. Thank you so much for watching. Um, have a fantastic day. Wow, absolutely incredible. What can I say? Uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. Bernard, you have done an incredible uh, learning opportunity there for everyone. It's just un unbelievable. Uh, Paul? Best tour ever. Man, that's not true. <laughs> but thank it, you, Bill. It, 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 it is because you have set a whole new standard. I, I've never seen anything like it. We, you know, there's all, obviously, all, all the tours are great. But this was extraordinary. Your engagement and your interaction with the people and the way you implement it, the depth of their understanding, best tour ever. Amazing. That's very, very kind, Paul. I don't agree, but we'll have to agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was I was engaged. I was engaged the entire time, typing like a maniac. All the takeaways. It was breathtaking. The I, knowledge. I, Let, I've, let's see, I've seen this twice. I've seen it twice now. And Bernard, I had a smile on my face all the way through. The way you engage with your team members, it, unbelievable. And I, I love the uh, little quips that you've got. Cami cards. I bet there's people who don't know what a cami card is. <laughs> Kamishi buy board cards, right? So you just there was cut questions down about that. you guys in New Zealand have got so much energy. It's it's <laughs> just incredible. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> we have anyway, to I, we have to, to survive. We're stuck on a desert island. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Yeah, I, the Irish have definitely given you a run for their money, haven't they? They give us all a run for our money. But now we got the New Zealanders at the other end of the world that are that have set a new standard for all of us. Extraordinary. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, let's get questions. Let's get questions. Let's not just us talk. Uh, okay, yeah, we quick question. We got like type it in. Let's eight minutes it. for questions uh, because okay. we took took time from every. So, Jim, if uh, Bernard hasn't answered any questions, can you ask them now for him, please? Okay, I've got a couple for sure. Uh, the first one I had was from JN. It was, "How do you get 5S shadow boards to stick with operators?" 
Uh, that's a great question. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. I sorry, you go, Paul. Go ahead. No, no, you go. If you know what the answer, you know what the question is. Go for it. Oh, all, all I was going to say is the only way we make anything stick is if the people do it. If you do it, if your manager does it, if the boss does it, if the owner does it, um, it's gonna it's gonna fall into disrepair pretty quick. So if you have a anything that's done, and we're we're a million miles away from perfect, but if you um, the key thing is get the people to do it, get them to you know do their own improvements. That's that's probably my simple answer. And that way they'll respect they'll respect the time and the the sweat equity that they've put into that improvement you see and um but the, the team leaders still need to keep the rope tight so there's a couple of things going on there yeah. yeah well i personally think the big thing is you're keeping the rope tight you demonstrate that you're looking around you're always changing improving picking things up the floor this is the key if you're not doing that i'm going to tell you you're going to fail you're doing it perfectly next next question um this one was actually from me it was uh in the industry I used to work in, controlling dust was a big problem. So I'm wondering if you had a couple of uh, improvements that you made in that area that really helped you. Sorry, in which area? Controlling dust, dust emissions. Uh, what, what are some of the oh. tricks to controlling dust for you? Oh, yeah. We're not very good at it, so I'm, I probably can't answer <laughs> your question. So the only... This the, we we are not we're, we're always trying to fix the root cause, which is try and you know suck it out of the way or or blow it out of the way, get it away from the workers, um, from the team. But then of course we make sure we've got um, you know, always lots of um cleaning equipment handy everywhere we go so that it's easy to clean. So you've got to always trying to fix improve root cause. Of course, um, we're always just trying new things, but we're a long way a long way from perfect on that. We got That's so perfect. much dust. Go. I just ask. Go visit a bakery. They're pretty good at it. Awesome. Yeah. That's a great tip. I'll yeah, go check it out. Power flying all over the place. Uh, okay. The Did next you... one is uh, what are the red and green cards called? And I think we called that one out. But Kam Kam you... Kambichi by. They're Kambichi by board. Go ahead, by, yeah. Kami yeah. cards. Kami cards. That's what you got. They just, it's, a, it's a visual place to know the things that need to be done at the, all day long. So you quickly see. You see a red one. You need to turn it over. You need to do something. Yeah, that's great. Um, how do you uh, think sustaining lean in the office? Uh, do you think it's more challenging? And how do you keep the rope type for this group? Uh, yeah. More challenging, probably a, a, you could say it's more challenging because there's a lot more waste hidden on people's computers. And, and you know, if they're working on a computer all day, so Yes, you do need your team leaders that are like in, say, customer service and administration. They need to be very um, focused on challenging people's, you know, making sure there's a standard for file with, you know, things are filed and because it's very easy to hide waste and also hide clicks on a computer, right? So that yeah. builds up really quick. So, yeah, we're always, always combating that. But again, same thing, get them to make their own improvements um, and make sure they're updating updating the SOP so that everyone learns from that or the standard operating procedure and then make sure that's getting shared across the company. So, yeah, I mean, the, the office, I don't know how, yeah, I think Bern factory Bern and office, they, they've got different challenges, different challenges. Bernard, let me, let me comment, okay? In my opinion, no, there's no difference at all. And I think Bernard has demonstrated that very clearly with the people in the office, that if you're on top of it and you're serious about it, you teach people how to look for it. Maybe it's a little different, but it's not any more challenging. It's it's as easy to do there as it is anywhere. A matter of fact, sometimes it's easier because there's more waste. Bernard, yep. I have a question for you. Please define cheap and cheerful and walk away standards real quick for the team. Okay, so cheap and cheerful, we say we're always trying to, before we, when we make an improvement, we're always trying to find just recycled stuff and do it, do that improvement cheaply. And if the improvement sticks and it's a good one, then we can always upgrade it. So improve the improvement with better material. But you would have seen as we go around, lots of it is cheap and cheerful. So it's like using re recycled, even recycled screws and nails. And whip. you know, I don't know if that makes sense, Paul. Yeah, well, I just want to understand the cheerful part. How do you, how do you incorporate? Why do you call it cheerful? Just oh, just cheap and cheerful. Oh, because I don't like the word cheap just by itself because it sounds horrible. <laughs> okay, so just cheap and cheerful. So it's just kind of like a, a rhythmic uh, saying, cheap and cheerful. Hey, you know, let's get it done. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. cheerful because he's not spending any money. Yeah, that's right. Oh, right that's there right. You go. There you go. There you go. There yeah. you go. That's what I wanted. Richard's to know. got what the answer. Walk away? walk away. Thank you, Richard. Walk away standards quickly. What does that mean? So it's a photo of the area, how it should look when you walk away. Real simple. So it's like when you, ah, 
okay, yeah. It's like this. Right. This is what this area. This is what this area should look like once you've finished the work. Brilliant. Walk away. It's really powerful. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. We've got them brilliant, everywhere. Brilliant. We've got we've got hundreds of them about <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you know, you have you have lots of great little catchy uh, sayings that I've never heard before. Really well done, Bernard. Cool. Your team is amazing. Okay, That's more questions. New Zealanders are for. That's what they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're cheap and cheerful. Okay, okay. we got two, two more minutes, Jim. Any others? There was I have some questions. No, there was no more questions, but there's a lot. I have of some questions. People have. Oh, this guy. So okay. Whoever's got a question, just ask it. Okay. Uh, question is for Brad. This wonderful tour. The two things I want to say, would it be better to say do more with the same? Because sometimes when I have a feedback in our team, what we're doing lean to lead people off. So maybe the catchy, can we do more basically kind of promote growth? We want to grow the business. We can do more with the same, which is the same, but it's the mindset. And number two question is how, I know this is phase two, is how are you going to tell the team if they win or lose? Part of the visual management is, how they know they're coming today. They say, yeah, we had a great day today. And then, you know, part of the measurement, which is an operation, you have the, how many units they build. But in your case, that's the top for your question. How you let everybody know we win today without you telling them. Yeah, so, all, yeah, it's a great question. I'll answer your second one first because scoreboards are really critical because you think about your favorite sport, you go and play it, you go and watch your favorite sport in a stadium in New Zealand. We play a lot of rugby and, if you went into the stadium and there's no scoreboard, there'd be no spectators. They'd leave, right? They'd be screaming and swearing and like, I want a refund for my ticket, right? They might still get drunk <laughs> and have some fun, but uh, they, sure, they sure wouldn't be watching the game, you know? They wouldn't be watching the game. So all the interest in the game is gone because the fun is gone if there's no one keeping score. So figure out a way to keep score in every department. So everywhere we go across in Premier Group, there's a there's a scoreboard in every department so you can see if the team is winning or losing. And that might be in some departments that's by the hour, some that's by the minute, some that's by um, you know, you, you just work out whatever time scale works in your each each operation. So that's really, really critical. Good. Okay, more questions or are we done? I'm sorry. The first question was he said was do more with less. Well lean is Paul will tell you this, but lean is to us is all about doing doing more with less. So I yeah, I agree with growth on top, but you got two in business you've always got two things. You want more sales growth, but you want to reduce costs at the same time. So yeah, I mean you figure it out, whatever works for you guys, you might Exactly. Yeah. Whatever works for you. You you need lean is lean is personal to what you're gonna do. Yeah. Look at I've never yeah. heard cheap and cheerful before, but I love it. And that's what they do down there. That's fabulous. Walkway standard, I've never heard it before. Fabulous. Everybody needs to do what works for them. Uh, somebody asked, can you explain the Kambichi bar cards? Real quickly, all it is, is you're taking the daily tasks that you need to complete. Sometimes it might be weekly, but generally it's a daily task that need to be complete. And as they're completed, they go from green. I mean, they go from red to green, giving a clear visual to everybody in that department on things that need to be completed throughout the day. Uh, Bernard, correct? Yeah. So yeah, that, that's list. great. Yep. Yeah. And we simple. use... Yeah, it's very it's it's what we just call visual control. So if you read, or if you study, I mean, anyone in this group's probably read um, the Toyota Way or read, you know, at least some something about Toyota. The, one of their key principles is um, use visual control, so no problems are hidden, right, Paul? Um, so right. so that's one of them, really. So you can walk into any area and go, oh, the team is winning or losing. And again, that's it's sort of in conjunction with the scoreboard. But let's say in our accounts department. I can go in there and see daily, weekly, and monthly, and I can see whether Ashley and the team are tracking well for the month or tracking well for the week or tracking well for the day. If she's got 80% of her cards read and it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon, she's having a real tough day, and she should have already called out for some help to help her with those right. daily tasks. Very good. Very good. Cool. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we're done. All right. All right, uh, we, all right, we're just going to do a poll right now, a quick poll. Uh, oh, it says my polling is inactive. I'm not sure why. So we're yeah, not going to do a quick poll. Uh, but, yeah, but uh, sure your poll every, Richard. Everybody thinks it's absolutely incredible what we've just done. So let's... On, you'd have to be crazy if you didn't think it was incredible. Ron, thank you. Thank you, Premier Group, Bernard and team. Just an uh, awesome, awesome tour. It really was an awesome tour. Um, absolutely the over the top we've got is in a month's time wednesday may the 8th we're going to visit pablo 
down at Scarpati in Argentina again. He's got a really new program that he wants to share with us. So 10 a.m. Eastern time, May the 8th, Wednesday, you'll get notification of that through all of the social media aspects. Uh, just Richard, to- Richard, Richard, let me just say, everyone, uh, yeah, Pablo is a superstar again, too. Don't miss it. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. There's, there's, there's one in a billion that they're coming up every time. It, That's all right. it's, they're incredible people. Absolutely. So just a, a, a call out at our conference that's coming up in Atlanta, October 28th to the 31st. Uh, just want to let you know that everyone who registers for a two second lean tour is going to get a special code number that's going to give them the cheapest uh, registration price ever. Uh, it's the same price for groups of 50 or more. You're going to get it as a single. So look out for that. Come to our conference. You'll get a testimonial from Tom Hughes uh, about the conference. It's going to be great. Uh, just a quick call out as well. How good are you? The AME Lean Sensei. It's a fantastic um, roadmap to your lean transformation. If you haven't seen it yet, you've got to look at it. Two Second Lean is part of the resources that we've got in that AME Lean Sensei. Maybe next month, I'll just do a little showcase on it. And finally, before we leave you, uh, Return Stronger. AME is a not-for-profit organization. So if any of you have really enjoyed this and you want to donate a small donation for us, that'll keep us going. We're all volunteers. We all do this because we love sharing. So finally. Brought to you by AME and PaulAcres.net, where you can find all my books and resources on my website, PaulAcres.net, for free. You can even get my new app, Two Second Lean Play, where I have all my books available in nine languages in the audio format designed for you to listen while you work and play at paulacres.net or lean play.